Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and today I have another Whip and Chat episode for you. It's been a little while so I'm out of practice. A Whip and Chat is basically where I show you a project that I'm working on and then we just chit chat. Uh, today I'm working on the Dark Queen of the Seas Stitch Along by Autumn Lane Stitchery and I'm working in the seaweed section which was the pattern released in January. So I'm a little bit behind on this piece, but I am enjoying it a lot. So there's um, no, no, uh, no, no, uh, I can't even talk. I'm not, I'm not upset about it. You know what I mean? So anyway, okay, so I was just showing you how I roll up to stitch in hand and this little needle minder here is one of my favorites from Agnes Little Minders on Etsy. Um, see how I've rolled up the left side? I'm right-handed, so this is how I do it. I'm going to get you closer. Um, so I forgot to, you know, bring my little Q-snap frame, which I usually use, and the Elon lap stand. Forgot to do that and bring it to my friend's house so that I could, you know, record this video <laughs> the way I'd normally stitch. But this is a good way to show how to stitch in hand as well. I'm using what's called the sewing method, which is where you um, put the needle in and then immediately bring it up without like having to do two motions. You're just manipulating the fabric underneath so that you can pull it through the top side. And the sewing method is definitely my favorite way of stitching in hand when, whenever possible. If you see me now, I'm my other hand is under the fabric right now. That's because I had to skip over quite a few stitches. Um, now, I, I'm not a perfectionist at this. Uh, I truthfully just think that, you know, stitching for me is relaxing. It's not about being perfect or anything. There are people out there that feel like your stitches have to be perfectly even in order for it to, to be, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you know, some people, some people really focus on, you know, the end result, which is fine. Uh, but for me, I just, I just enjoy the stitching part and, you know, it shows the evolution of my ability as a crafter, I guess. So if you're like me and you're a newbie stitcher, like don't be too hard on yourself if your stitches don't lay flat. Really, you know, you're doing this for you, not for anybody else. So don't worry about it. Okay, you see how I j jumped all the stitches? That's because I forgot that there was this one green stitch over here and I'm at the end of the, of the thread anyway. So, you know, I was like, well, do you know, I have to end this thread anyway. I might as well just carry and do this one stitch in this area just to get rid of the thing. Oh, and then I noticed that I, I put the stitch in the middle instead of the far corner. So I'm going to rethread it and try that again. <laughs> you can see I, I put my needle there on the magnet so that it doesn't fly away or, you know, get knocked over. I'm a very clumsy person. I don't know if that's something that you know about me. It probably isn't. <laughs> um, but if you, if you meet me in real life, you'll know that I'm, I've got two left feet. Like I just, I trip over myself all the time. I've run into things. I'm constantly getting bruised. Um, I'm just a little bit clumsy. So those little needle minders, are perfect. And I apologize for the blurriness right now, but it will get better. Trust me. Um, so anyway, let's, that, that's what I'm working on. I'm finishing up the first page and then, well, mostly finishing the first page and then, uh, during this weapon chat, and then I'm going to move on up. This is how I secure the threads in the back. I don't remember what it's called. You like run the needle under a few stitches. I think I read it was three, but I try to do four to secure that thread. I put down the needle and then I pull a little bit, just a little bit. You don't want to um, pull the threads of the fabric and then just snip uh, really close to the edge there. So that's how I get it to look on the back. You can tell that my back isn't perfect. 
uh, <laughs> see here, but nobody's going to see the back but me. Okay. This is how I do a loop start just in case you're interested. See how the, the floss is folded over in the middle and the two ends are brought together. I'm a thread licker. How about you? Let me know down below. Are you a thread licker or do you use a, a threader, a needle threader? Or do you have another method? There is another method I use, but um, I only really use it with my Haid, my Heaven and Earth design, because that's such a big project where you're changing colors all the time. Otherwise, if it's just one color that I'm, you know, doing the full strand at a time, then I don't worry about it. So I'm going to fill in those areas there, like I just indicated. Um, and this is how you do it. So I go, I always start in the upper left corner of the box and go to the lower right. Um, it doesn't matter which way you cross your X, just as long as you're always consistent. So that's what I'm doing here. And then... Um, I sometimes I go back and forth. Sorry, I wasn't, I was looking, looking really hard at the, at the fabric and not at the screen where I'm supposed to be filming and moving everything around really fast. Sorry if you're getting sick. Um, I'm going to anchor my hand on the table now, so it should be less movement. Um, sometimes I will cross my X's and sometimes I go back and forth. It depends for me on the pattern and I try to do it row by row. So, uh, because these are single stitches on the row, I'm just crossing the full X and coming down. So I hope you can see that. I'm going to stop talking about the actual stitching part. <laughs> so that's a little, a little guide to how to stitch in hand, I guess, if you are interested. Um, but now I'm just going to talk about life and stuff. Um, so it's been a little while. Um, I don't even remember really what I talked about in my last whip and chat. Uh, I know that it was diamond painting related and truthfully, I just, I'm not able to diamond paint where I am, so um, not at the moment anyway. I might I might try to film another whip and chat with the diamond painting soon, but I figured I'd for my multi craftual peeps, <laughs> I would uh, give you give you another craft or two for the next two weeks. Next week is going to be knitting, so I hope you're excited. Um, but I. I haven't been crafting as much as I would at home for obvious reasons, uh, mainly because I want to spend time enjoying my family and enjoying, you know, friends and trying to be mindful and, you know, um, in the moment. Obviously, things are a lot different right now for me because if you, well, if you don't know, if you're a new subscriber, hi, welcome. Uh, I see you. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for coming and hanging out with me today. Um, my grandfather was very sick and uh, with lung cancer and he passed away uh, while I was visiting. And so I've extended my stay from... I was originally supposed to go home on New Year's Day, and I've extended to April 1st. So if that kind of shows you where we're at, I, I wanted to stay so that I could make sure that my grandma was okay and, you know, give her some company because it's very lonely living in a house by yourself. And I can only imagine, I, I don't know how it feels, but... I can only imagine that when you go from living with someone for over 40, what, 40, 48 years is how long they were married, um, that it's really difficult to be alone. And for those of you who have lost your partner, I, I'm really sorry. I can only imagine, even, even if you were only together for a short while in comparison, when you go from having, you know, your best friend, your protector, your confidant, um, your lover, you know, what, however you, you, your relationship was with them. 
And then suddenly not having that anymore, it's heartbreaking. And so the last thing that I wanted was for her to be alone right now because she, she is loved and, she, you know, we, we want her to feel comfortable. So without getting too far into the details, because it's really none of anyone's business, um, I'm staying a little longer. And while I do miss home and, you know, I miss, I miss a lot of things <laughs> about my life in Ireland, I, I feel lucky that I'm able to be here, um, that I, that I have the opportunity. I, I can take this time to be here. And I don't think a lot of people have that opportunity in this day and age, you know? Um, I just happened to not be working for someone where I could only take a week off of work or, you know, um, that I don't have the kind of responsibilities where I need to stay in one place and I can't be here. You know, it's all of those things. Personally, I feel like I've been, I've been waiting for this for a long time. You know, um, I had advance notice. He's been, my grandfather had been going through, the motions of stage four lung cancer for many years. And I knew maybe subconsciously that I wanted to be there for the end and to make sure that I took care of everyone to the best of my ability. Um, I'm not perfect or anything and I'm probably not everything that, you know, everyone needs right now, but, um, it was important to me that I was there. And so I feel like I've maybe in a sort of way, what's that word that everybody uses? I think it's a manifest, you know, you manifest the destiny that you want. And so I put myself in a position where I was able to, to be able to stop working, to stop, you know, everything that I needed to do in my, you know, in my personal life, in my professional life to do this. And I'm so grateful for that. I know that not everybody can do that. And, um, though I have to say that for the last few years, you know, it has, it has had its ups and downs regarding that. I have flip flopped so many times on, you know, developing my professional career, working for someone else and making a decision to work for myself instead and turning that into a business that, that has been a real struggle that I'm sure that some of you understand and it's scary. (laughs) You know, it's kind of scary going from um, working for someone and having this, I, I don't know, I don't know if I'm alone in this. So I'm going to back up a little. I, I've always worked for someone else. I've been a teacher. I've been, uh, I've been an IT tech, sort of. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if, if. I really count that as being a a professional, but I did work in it. Um, I've, I've done lots of little things. You know, I was a, I was a florist. I worked at a grocery store. I did, you know, I did little jobs like this when I was younger. And most recently I was actually, um, I call it a glorified janitor, uh, when I'm joking, you know, cause I want to make it lighthearted, but you know, I worked, I worked in a leisure center, a gym, and, uh, <laughs> I did enjoy that job. I, I had, there were so many aspects of that job that I really loved, but it was easy to make fun of it. You know, it wasn't my calling. Um, I did try to make it the best that I could, you know, and stay humble. And, you know, that's really important, I think. But in the end, you know, I did feel like 
there's something missing. You know, I'm just doing these, I'm doing these little jobs that are tidying me over, but what am I, what am I really doing? And, um, now that I'm thinking back on it, I think there was a part of me that just knew, you know, if you, if you get into a position where you are salaried, you know, you're on the payroll, uh, that's great for your professional development, I guess, but is that what your family needs right now? Or do you need to be more flexible? And I suppose, um, after the whole, you know, when 2020 started to show the ugly side, uh, and you know, we started getting locked down and everything, I realized that being flexible is really important right now for me. And it may not be for everybody, but for me, it was really important. And when I talked to my grandparents at the around September time, I realized that I needed to be here. And that's when I booked my ticket and made that decision. Like, you know, okay, I'm going to go to the States and it's not for pleasure. (laughs) It's going to be to, to make sure that I'm there for my grandparents. And, you know, I realized that you know, sometimes, sometimes we, we think about what other people are going to think about us when we make decisions. And I try not to do that anymore, but, uh, you know, there's this nagging voice in the back of my head that was like, Oh, people are going to think that you're on a joy ride and you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you're not taking this seriously. And actually, <laughs> actually it, it's quite the opposite. Um, and I know that y'all, know this, but you know, I, I've taken every precaution that I can and I intend to do so going forward. Um, but I, I, I do think that, uh, family is really important. And if you're doing, if you, if you're not doing something frivolous, you know, I think that you should be respected for making the decisions that you're making. And that's all I'm going to say about that because <laughs> I don't, I don't want to upset anybody because I know that it's, it is a, um, a hard subject and a sore subject now, you know, it's been so long. I totally looked away from the screen and I missed the spot where I made a mistake, um, and then had to go back and fix it. So I'm stitching this on, um, I should have said this earlier. I'm stitching this on a 28 count linen. So the holes are bigger than other linens. You know, this is a a large weave, so it's easy to see, but I do recommend that you use a nice bright light. So the light that I'm using, um, in this shot during this video, it's actually a, see, I almost put it down without the magnet and I decided to grab the, the needle minder because if I don't, then it'll roll away. And this is the only needle I have with me today. So, uh, the weave is a lot larger. It's easier to see the holes and where you need to put the stitches. Um, so I'd recommend if you're new to cross stitch that if you want to use linen, that you definitely start with a 28 count. I made the mistake of, of not. All right. When I pull a new thread, I usually go not to my elbow, like I'm showing you here, but actually to my upper arm, uh, where like the middle, middle of the bicep. And then I cut, um, this way I get more or less even lengths. And then I just pull one out of there because there's six strands in DMC. Um, and then I'm going to show you, this is the zoomed out version of me doing the loop method. So bring those two ends together and then thread it that way. Um, but you've, you've seen it already, so I don't have to explain. I'm going to get a sip of coffee. I hope you're, you have a beverage as well. So let's, let's get off this serious subjects and, uh, and talk some lighthearted stuff, shall we? Um, one of, one of the things that I've been doing a lot recently is, uh, looking at houses 
And I am not the kind of person who would normally do that. Um, I've, I've been known to have, you know, itchy feet and be like, oh, I wonder, I wonder what kind of houses are on sale. But, excuse me, where I am living in Cary, excuse me, there are not very many options, you know? It's, it's not exactly a buyer's market because, uh, you, you don't, you don't, you see the same houses for sale for years, you know, it's very rare that something new comes on the market, um, unless maybe it's a housing development or something, which I'm not very interested in personally. And I'm not really in a position to buy a house at this moment, but there's, you know, a lot of my friends are. And so watching them get excited and trying to buy property and stuff is, it, it makes me kind of think about it too. So I've been going through and, you know, helping my friend and, uh, looking, looking at all these different houses in the Richmond area, cause that's where they live. And I think my favorite thing, my favorite thing about it is the fact that, um, it's, it's interesting to see the, the different ways that people style houses and like what's what's popular now compared to what was popular before. So you'll see all these ranges of beautiful homes and you know some of them have been renovated and some of them haven't. Um, and obviously, you know, if you're if you were my age or older, you've you've probably looked at the market, you know, you've probably gone and looked at some houses or, or gone online and looked. Well, nowadays, um, I don't know if you've looked recently, but there's, there's these different websites where you can apply all these filters and choose, you know, the, the minimum of what you want, and it'll show you all the things in a, in a price bracket or in an area, you know, however you want to define how, what, what determines the house that you're looking for, right? <laughs> so I'm playing around on these websites and just for fun, you know, uh, looking at the things that are important to me in a house. And I know this is totally like, this is totally dream territory. Okay. Because there's no way that I'm buying a house and I'm certainly not buying a house in Richmond, but <laughs> after applying all these filters and things, uh, all of the houses that I really love are so expensive. They're well out of my price range. So I, I told you it's a, dr it's a dream thing, but I do understand. And there, there's obviously this, the more serious side that, you know, housing is really hard to find right now. And it's hard to find at a reasonable price. Um, I can laugh about it because I'm not in a position where I need to buy a house, but there are people out there who are in a position where they have to buy something or, you know, they're trying to get out of the rental agreement because it's a terrible agreement, a terrible contract, or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, maybe they're in a position where, you know, they're getting mistreated and they need a new, a new place to go. Uh, hopefully, you know, their family will help them, but not everybody's family is like mine, you know, and maybe yours. So, you know, I really feel for those people. And so I hope that you know that when I'm talking about these things that I'm, you know, obviously talking in a lighthearted way because that's the way that I'm viewing it, but I'm not naive to it, if you know what I mean. I thought I might just throw that in there because I don't want people to get the wrong idea here. But um, I don't know if you've seen it or not. There's this, if, do you, do you watch Saturday Night Live? Um, I don't typically watch it. So it's, you know, it's an American show. Uh, it's a, a comedy like parody satirical show. Uh, it's been running for a very long time and sometimes it can, it can be really funny and sometimes I don't find it as funny, but there's this one sketch that my friend sent because of all of these late night, uh, house hunting kind of online, <laughs> uh, adventures that have been going on. And it's, it's a skit about Zillow is Zillow is one of the companies that does, you know, they're one of the websites. There's a bunch of them, but 
they're one of them and you have to like <laughs> if you like SNL you're gonna really like this um, it is not appropriate for kids so get the headphones okay watch it when the kids are not around but it but it is funny uh, because people who are my age you know in their 30s who are maybe late 20s but definitely 30s who are looking to buy their first home uh, <laughs> the, the advertisement is hilarious or the skit is hilarious it it's uh, it's framed as if it were an ad for this website. And if you've seen it before, let me know what you think of it down below. <laughs> it's so funny. So that's what I've been doing lately, um, is looking at, looking at houses. There's a house that's down the street from where I live where I've had, I've had my eye on this house for, it was since I, since I moved in to the house that my grandparents live in, right? We moved there when I was 12 or 13 years old, I think. I might've been 13. Uh, I believe I was in my last year of, of middle school. So probably 13. Um, I was the oldest, by the way, in my class, you know, like the oldest in my group of friends. Um, because I was born in February, obviously, um, I just ended up being the oldest. So I think I was 13 when we moved 2001, I think crazy. Anyway, uh, we, we moved and there's many different types of houses on the street where they live. I'm not going to tell you the street, but, um, the, the area, the street is, is, it has many different types of houses. So you have, uh, lower income family houses and, uh, very expensive upper middle class to very wealthy. Um, and so it's, a, it's a very, mm, it's very odd. <laughs> Let's put it that way. The first house believe was built in 95 or 96 and it's a colonial style home I'm just gonna just try to paint the picture it is a colonial style brick house two stories two or three two three two can't remember um, it's it's tall <laughs> it does not have a front porch or anything um, and it also has an extension on the back or like it's almost like a, a garage, but it's not, it's, it's a, a workout room. I had no idea. And there's no way you would be able to tell from the road because it is set back so far. I want to say, I want to say it's nearly a quarter of a mile away from the road, but you can still see it because there's this massive field out the front. It comes with 25 acres. And when I first moved onto that street, the person who lived there had horses. So I guess they were breeding them or stabling them or something. Um, but now that whole front part of their yard is no longer fenced in. It's just, just grass, I guess. Um, maybe they bale it, for, you know, hay bale or something. I'm not sure what they do now because I don't live here anymore, but, um, the new owners, Anyway, that house has been for sale several times over the past 20 years, right? And uh, it's, I, I believe that the possible reason is property taxes. You know, like, why would you give up this beautiful house if, if you had it other than the property tax? Uh, so that's my guess. I don't know. Maybe it's haunted. I don't know. <laughs> it could be, it could be. Um, but I went ahead and for the first time ever, I looked up the house online to see what it's worth and to look inside. Cause I'm nosy. I want to know. <laughs> so it turns out that this home, it's gorgeous. It has like five bedrooms, three bathrooms. 
It has all the, you know, different sitting rooms. It's a very old style home. It has uh, a living room, but it also has a rec room. And then it has a basement as well where you could, they have a pool table down there. I don't know if that's your thing. Um, and like a dartboard and stuff like that. Um, but it's a big open space downstairs in the basement as well. And then, like I said, they have the workout, like a workout room that's off the house. Um, pretty cool. And <laughs> I did the virtual tour and everything and I, and I really enjoyed it. Completely hardwood floors. The kitchen is phenomenal. Um, everything that I would want, you know, like a, a nicely appropriated kitchen. <sighs> They're asking for 1.3 million. Like, <laughs> that's, that's steep. So I went ahead and I looked back in the records. Of course, I can't afford that kind of a house. I think the, the, what do they call it? The pay, if you do a 30 year loan, it's some, it came out to like 5,300 a month. Ridiculous. Um, before taxes, you know? Um, so no, but I went back and looked at they have this feature, which is really, I think is really important in today's market if you're looking at houses. And let me know, like, are you looking for a house right now? Uh, you know, I want to hear your stories. I want to read your stories. Please, please let me know. But when I looked at the history of this home, it showed that the house a month ago was priced at 660000 so that's doubling the the price, the double doubling the value of that home in a month purely because of the market. People are gasping for homes right now and unfortunately there aren't very many good ones and when you do find a house that you like there are already offers on it because people are so desperate. And, you know, a lot of people have had a lot of time to, to pay off their loans and get their credit back up and, you know, they're ready, they've pre-approved. And so they can look at something and literally just snap their fingers and say, yep, I'll take it. So if you go online and you're looking, I know if you're not in the market for a house, I'm sorry, but this is, this is what I'm doing right now. This is, this is my life. Welcome to my life. Uh, it's quite boring here. Um, anyway, the, um, the listings that are on there on these websites, if they're not 10 hours old or less, then they're probably not something that you want. That's how quick it is. So three times a day, I'm checking these sites using the same filters that I've always gotten. And I'm finding some amazing homes that I really love uh, that I think that, you know, my friends would love to. But I guess it's kind of uh, inspired me to think about my position a little bit now. I'm in a different position because I live in the EU and uh, in the very rural part of Ireland that I do live in, uh, like I said, those houses have been on the market for years. No one is flipping them. You know, there's no interest in there whatsoever to do that kind of thing, which I would find really fun to do, you know, like I would, I would almost think of it like a, like a craft project, <laughs> you know, uh, obviously I don't have the skills to do the work myself, but I would love to, to have a hand in doing something like that. But obviously you need capital for that. So that's not, that's not going to happen. What I'm really thinking about. Okay. That's, that's like the dream, Rachel over there <laughs> who's dreaming about these things. But, um, Actual Rachel is like, okay, I'm going to be renting the home that I'm in for quite a few more years. I've already been there for like five years and I, there are things in the house that I want to change and it's gotten to the point where it's bothering me so much that I can no longer take it. 
just, you know, we're spending all this time in our homes now. And so renovating them is a big deal. And there's a lot of, a lot of business out there now for people who are doing renovation because people are sick of being stuck staring at the same four walls, right? So hear me out. This is the plan. When I get back to Ireland, I want to update the flooring in my kitchen and dining room. Uh, the, the flooring in all the other rooms except the bathroom. Flooring in the other rooms, the bedrooms and the, the living room are fine. I can handle them, right? But the kitchen gets the most use. And it's, to me and my eyeballs, it's disgusting. I want to fix it. I want to change it. Um, it's this outdated old tile. And if you haven't seen it already, okay. I'm going to try to remember to put in a card up in the corner. I've, I've got a playlist here that is my cooking videos. And you'll be able to see my kitchen. And you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. I've got pine cabinets, which I do not like. It is the style. It's the rage, I guess, question mark. Or it was the rage um, to have these pine cabinets, pine, uh, door jams, pine, uh, what do they call it? Skirting boards. I don't like pine. I don't like that shade. I like darker, like Java coffee, but one or the other. So, uh, I lean more towards coffee cause it's a cooler tone but Java works just as well. And that's what I have in my, in my living room now. So if you want to have a look, <laughs> if you want to be nosy, um, I recommend the Carbonara video because it was the first one I made and it's funny and it has Luna in it. Um, the second one, I don't, well, Luna might be in it a little bit, but I'm, I'm embarrassed for myself for my kitchen. It's not that I'm embarrassed for you to see it. Cause you know, like let's keep it real, right? Like there's always going to be a part of ourselves that we find flawed or imperfect or something. And I can't just change that overnight. But if there's a quick fix <laughs> to, to a problem that, well, for me has felt like a problem for ages, it's that the cabinets are hard to clean. There's some kind of varnish on them that makes them sticky. And I clean them twice a year, you know, like the deep clean. But what I really want to do is strip them of the varnish, sand them and paint them. And then I want to get the slat flooring. So if you follow Cal over at Cal's Crafts, I think, I think she's only really shown it in her Patreon videos, but she's putting in this slat flooring. It's like, um, a, a vinyl wood effect floor. And I really want to get that for my kitchen and dining room. Cause I think that it'll really pull together the room. I want the, the coffee colored floor and then a, um, light cabinet with a dark handle possibly either. Well, maybe not, maybe, maybe like, a a nickel, plated type. But anyway, so I'm, I'm planning on renovating my kitchen because I'm just, I'm so sick of the pine and the, the property, the people who are renting the property to us allowed us, they contacted the owners and the owner said it was fine if we wanted to change or update things. So, and they even gave us permission to like get rid of all the old furniture and everything. I just wish that they would give us you know, give us the option to buy the home because I would, um, at this point, you know, I, I love where we live. I love that house. I love the land. You know, I want to, I want to do more with it, but some things don't make sense. Um, from, from a rental perspective, even if we did stay for 10 or 15 years, you know what I mean? But anyway, I figure this, we're going to live there for a few more years. Why not? Why not? What are your thoughts on that? Actually? I would like to know because, you know, if I were just renting an apartment, I would not bother. You know what I mean? I would just deal with it. Um, 
you wouldn't, you wouldn't be like pulling up the carpet and putting in plush carpet in a rental, right? You would just buy a rug and, (laughs) and use that. Right. But in the house that I'm currently in, all the floors are laminate and to me, the floor is ugly as sin. And if it's going to just cost me a few hundred bucks to, to refloor it and get some paint and take a week when I'm in lockdown, <laughs> cause I'm going to, I'm going to go home and I'm going to be confined to the home for two weeks. So I've already planned, like, we're going to get that box delivery from Eatstro. Y'all, if you live in Ireland, this is not sponsored. Okay. I'm not sponsored. I don't have an affiliate link, nothing, but, um, there's a box service where they deliver the ingredients to your home and they give you the recipes. Eatstro, E-A-T-S-T, no, Eatstro, E-A-T-S-T-R, anyway, whatever, I'll put it down below. <laughs> I can't, I can't spell out loud. It's one of my flaws. <clears throat> I've always tried, but for whatever reason, maybe it was like the pressure of spelling bees or something. I don't know. I don't. I don't understand it. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Um, Eatstro.ie. Planning on getting those meals delivered. I can get four up to four meals in a box. So that takes care of four days. And then the other days will probably, you know, make a soup or, you know, eat. Uh, James, James has been going crazy with the one pot over there. He's like a one pot master now. He makes rice dishes, risotto dishes, like everything. He's really getting um, a handle on the Instapot now. And so I'm confident that we could use leftovers or have the grocery store drop off a bag of groceries once a week, you know, milk or whatever. Um, I guess that's, that's the upside of of lockdown. But, um, I'm confident that, you know, we're not, I'm not going to get COVID. Um, I haven't so far, knock on wood. Um, and it'll just, hopefully it'll just be us being in the house, twiddling our thumbs for two weeks. But instead of twiddling our thumbs, I would love to have a house project to keep myself occupied. And so that's what I'm planning to do. That is, that is the major thing. I want the kitchen done. The bathroom is going to be next. The bathroom is going to be for the summer. Uh, our bathroom, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't want to put a picture in or anything. I'll paint the picture. Okay. You open the door. The door opens into the bathroom naturally. Uh, on the left side, you have a pedestal sink and above that is the little medicine cabinet. Then you have the toilet and on the far wall opposite the door is a bathtub. And then on the right side next to the bathtub on this wall, the right wall is a shower, like a, a walled shower. So it's for a single person. It's got clear walls on it. And then beside the shower where the door is, there's, I've got my little storage rack and then there's the towel rack on the wall and a towel rack behind the door. (sighs) There's like no space, right? Uh, I think it was a few years ago I caved and I bought an under the sink, uh, like for pedestal sinks, it's an under the sink shelving unit that's flat packed, (laughs) you know, Ikea style. And I think I got that from Argus for 50 bucks or something. And it was a huge lifesaver at the time because then I could put my band-aids and, you know, whatever else I need to store down there. But I still have a huge storage issue, you know. So I've got some baskets that are at the head of the tub next to the shower that holds all the miscellaneous stuff like shavers for James, uh, you know, nail polish and nail polish remover, um, scrubby things, you know, like stuff. There's a lot of stuff in a bathroom. 
but I'm tired of seeing it, you know? I just want it to be out of sight. I want storage where you can just go, okay, I know I have the thing and the thing is in there. So I'm thinking about getting another cabinet that fits at the head of the tub, a thin, like a thin cabinet. And then there are these little cabinets that actually fit between the tub and the shower. It's a perfect size and it holds your toilet paper. So you're not looking like I'm always staring, sitting on the john, staring at a bag of toilet paper. <laughs> Because you, you got to go, you got to buy the variety pack or not the variety pack, the, the mega pack, the family size pack. That's the best value. Like, I don't know. I wouldn't buy any less, um, especially now. Um, no, but so, you know, just to tidy it up because for me, like I'm not in college anymore. I'm not a young professional, uh, who has no money for these things. I feel like if I save the money, then I can give the the bathroom the makeover that I want, you know, paint the walls. Right now it's sky blue walls and I just want them to be white, you know? I don't want to, to, it just feels kind of, I don't know, tacky or something. Um, The light fixture could be changed very easy to fix and get an LED bulb in there or, you know, a little, uh, I'm using air quotes here, chandelier, like a, like a modern day, uh, light fixture that throws more light around the room because right now it's not bright enough to do makeup in there. And, you know, it would be nice to have more, more storage, more counter space, So these are all the things that are going in my mind right now. You know, these are the little things I know I can, I can do these things. I can accomplish things. Uh, these are little things I can control that would make me feel better. And I know that in the grand scheme of things, like who really cares? You know what I mean? Does it really matter? No, it, it really doesn't. But I guess, uh, the way that I'm looking at it is that, you know, these are little mini projects that because, because Ireland is still in a major lockdown, you're not supposed to leave five kilometers outside your house. You're not allowed to travel out of the country without a valid reason, um, that they decide on, you know, that in order to stay sane, these projects don't seem so frivolous anymore. You know what I mean? Excuse me while I take another sip of coffee. And I'm getting so many great ideas from looking at houses. I guess the downside of looking at all these houses online is that I'm getting a feel for the American market and the amount of square footage and openness in a house over here is very, very different to Irish architecture. I would highly recommend if you're interested in Ireland and stuff like that, go onto their realty websites and have a look at the real estate. See what you think. Um, it'd be a fun little project if you're, if you're bored one day, um, or look at any country because it will really show you, you know, kind of like the, what, what is the most important room in a house in different countries? You know, I I suppose in a lot of countries, it's the main living area, but I mean, look at the, look at the sizes of bedrooms in America. Huge, absolutely huge. I mean, um, a California King bed is usually the standard size for the bed to fit in a master bedroom, or I suppose they call it the owner's, the owner's room now. Um, great change in terminology. I need to remember to, to fix my language for that. Um, so in the owner's suite, it's, it's, it's a massive amount of area so that you can have a large bed. Whereas in, and I know this is very telling and it's probably 
not something that I should talk about too much online, but the bedrooms in Ireland are much smaller and can only really maybe fit a queen, maybe, uh, depending on the orientation of the room. And so that can be a little, a little off putting, you know, I know that it's a room that you're meant to sleep in. And maybe change your clothes in. Um, but the the size of the room and the size of the homes is very, uh, very different, you know? So just food for thought, stuff that I'm doing right now. <laughs> I know it has nothing to do with crafting, but it kind of does. I mean, the whole renovation or not renovation, but, you know, remodeling. I don't know what you, what do you call it when you do like a facelift on a room, uh, makeover or whatever that is very crafty for me. Uh, and I'd love to share that proc process with you. I'll make dedicated videos on that. So, you know, if you, if you're not interested in that, that's fine. Uh, no pressure. You don't have to watch it. Uh, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I would love to document going from what we have now to what I'd love to get and, and make, you know, um, and do it, do it on a budget too. You know, I, I don't want to spend a load of money. Um, I think the most expensive things are going to be the flooring, um, and the light fixture that that's going to be expensive, but the paint I can get, I can try to find a discount on the paint it's coming up to spring over there. So, you know, they always run sales, you know, you can buy two cans for X amount, um, and get a can of primer too. So yeah, I think, I think it'll be fine. I think we could do it on a budget. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to spend too much on it, but I, but I think even just a small coat of paint, I remember when, I don't know if you were here with me last year, but at the beginning of last year, we, uh, painted our living room and we, we redid the living room. So before it was kind of like a creamy white and the fireplace was painted to look a brick color and the grouting was painted, you know, a dark brown. It wasn't real brick or yeah, it crazy. And so... <laughs> I was tired of the Wes Anderson vibes, you know, it felt very manly with the plaid, uh, the plaid easy boy chair or lazy boy recliners and everything. And we had a green love seat and it just, it just felt very blah to me. So we chucked the couch cause we never used it and it was smelly and old and not comfortable. Um, I got a, I got a desk, a crafting table for the living room, which is sorely underused. Um, and then we painted the walls a nice crisp white. We painted the skirting boards a lovely dark java. Got, got the door jams the same dark java color. So that that contrast, very high contrast between the walls and the door jams was, you know, super decorative, really lovely to look at. And then we painted the fireplace. We repainted the mantle with the java. Like it just, it just turned out really crisp and lovely. And the, <laughs> the fireplace is purple now. I mean, you can do whatever you want, right? They, they gave us permission and, you know, before we leave, we could, we could repaint the fireplace or, you know, do whatever. Uh, but it made it feel more homey, it made it feel more like our space. And all it took was a coat of paint. So, um, I'm definitely going to be doing more little projects like that, I think this year and just trying to enjoy the space since we do have to spend so much time in it. So did, did I think I was going to talk about this for an hour? No, but <laughs> thank you. If you did stick around with me, if you did make it this far, could you leave me a little emoji of a house or 
just write the word house if you if you don't know how to do the emoji thing um there the emojis are like these little pictures that you that you have on your phone but if you're not watching on a phone then I know that it can be difficult to to do that so I would love to know if you made it this far <laughs> it would be it would be great to see how many of you actually do watch till the till the end of the video um I know that longer videos are not everybody's cup of tea, but I do appreciate that you spent the time listening. And if you couldn't watch it all in one go, thanks for coming back and watching the rest of it. You know, I, I am so guilty of getting sidetracked or having to pause a video and not being able to come back to it. And I think that, uh, one of the best things, one of the best features about YouTube is the history button. So on the sidebar where you have your subscriptions and it, I think it has like originals and stuff like that. Uh, one of the little buttons says history. So you can go back and finish watching those videos that you were watching before. Super helpful. <laughs> and I use it all the time. Uh, especially for my YouTube creator friends. I, you know, I, I'm so guilty of just being like getting a phone call or just having to, to stop the video and, and do run an errand or something. And then I'm like, Oh my gosh, what was I doing? So anyway, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to love you and leave you with this, um, here in a second. Um, because I've got to go and watch Cal's live. It's it, when I'm, when I'm recording this voice, voiceover, it is Sunday. Cal's crafts always goes live on Sundays at eight o'clock British time, uh, which is, three o'clock, uh, Eastern. So I'm, I'm already an hour behind, but, um, I really wanted to get this video done for you all and, um, just be able to sit down and talk and chat with you all like before. And I really enjoyed it. Thank you for listening to me. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I love reading your comments. I'm sorry. I can't get to all of them. I'm trying to get better at comments and definitely in messages, but yeah, I, I hope that you understand and look at, look at this, look at how pretty it is. I'm just in awe. I love this project. Thank you all so much for being here. I'll see y'all soon. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>